Would you help me sing it? To God be the such a wonderful day. Amen. 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 What an auspicious occasion. Amen. To honor two of God's most deserving amen servants. Amen. Pastor Dennis Rogers and Lady Dora Ann Rogers. Amen. 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 Certainly I thank God for him. He is not only my pastor but he is my brother. Amen. Amen. And I can say he is a wonderful brother. Amen. I can follow his leadership because I know him behind the scenes. I know him in a way that you may ever, you may not ever know him, amen. Amen. And we've heard some great things, amen. But, amen, I certainly thank God for him. I thank God for uh, him assuming the mantle, amen, that was placed upon him, that was left for him to follow, amen. And he's done it, amen, with grace, humility, and great diligence, great faithfulness, and in a spirit of excellence, amen. Amen. Certainly, I know my mother's proud. Amen. Honor my mother. And let me just say, giving honor to my own wife and my own family, my own children. Amen. My daughter, my sons. Amen. Certainly, we thank God for this opportunity to stand before you. Amen. This job that I've been given is such an easy job. It's just such an easy job. We have a great preacher. Amen. A great man of God that's coming to bless us. Listen, he loves God with all of his heart. I went to get a bio from him and I realized one thing, it's not even necessary to read off certain accolades. Yes, he is the chief adjutant, I believe, of the uh, first jurisdiction. But listen, he's been serving his whole life. I've known him as, I guess as long as I could have known him. Amen. Our families go way back. Amen. Just, just, his, his bishop, which is his uncle, amen, just often shared words with me and my brother about how he, amen, uh, honored our father and how he watched my father as he grew up, amen. And so as I think back, amen, this, this occasion was meant to happen. Amen, amen. I've watched Brother Withers, amen, and I can say brother because he is a brother. Amen, amen. I've watched him. Amen. Even serve as a musician in the first jurisdiction. I watched him when he served with our own superintendent. Amen. For years. Just faithful. He's just been faithful in everything God has placed in his hands. I've seen him at national meetings. We've stopped, talked, shared. We've shared phone conversations. As my mind goes back six, seven years ago, five, six, seven years ago, we were talking quite a lot then, amen, just encouraging one another. And then I thank God because he is the pastor of the First Trinity, but he's the founder of the Open Door Conference, for which Lord truly, amen, had an opportunity to share a brief word, amen, and I want to thank you for, again, for opening the door for me, amen, amen. But Pastor Aaron Willis, if he's nothing else, amen, he is the husband, amen, let me say this, of our own lady, Alicia Withers. Yeah. Brother Aaron Withers Jr. Yeah. Amen, musician. Amen, and let me just lift this young lady up, Sister Avery Withers. Yeah. Sugar girl. Yeah. He's raising a CEO in his house. Yeah. Listen, if you don't know it, you just haven't been on social media at all. She's somebody to, rec to be reckoned with, amen. But amen, it don't happen when you don't get children like this. I've said it for years upon years without having parents like what they have. They don't just accidentally become great. This is a, a, a concerted effort, amen, of mother and father and of the grace of God, amen, upon their life. He's an anointed man of God. He has a great understanding of God's word. And amen, I thank God we, we have him here. And by the way, he's spoken, amen. He's even had a chance to speak at the church in Philadelphia. 
I'm talking about the church that Bishop J. Lewis Felton pastors, not the one in Revelation. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But thank God that Greater New Bible has him here. Amen. Your work is to be respected, your life, your ministry, and we're looking forward to God blessing us on today. Amen. We, would you pray for Pastor Aaron Withers, amen, of the First Trinity Church of God in Christ there in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Amen. After his choir would have sang, would you please stand to your feet, amen, and honor, amen, the word of God, the man that will deliver God's word on today, Pastor Aaron Withers. The song says... Jesus, and we give them total praise. No. 
There's absolutely no one like you. This is the day you made, and we choose to rejoice. We thank you now, God, for your presence that is in this place, and in your presence there's fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures evermore. We thank you now for this opportunity to stand. And I ask now, God, that you will wear my mouth this preaching time. Give me what to say and how to say it. And give your people an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And Father, I'll take no credit, no glory, but the honor and the glory belong to you. So I pray now that you will settle the hearts of your people, that you will confirm your word, and that we'll leave here with victory, that we'll leave here with strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, just give God praise and give him glory. Let me see you just for a moment. Take me see just for a moment. I'm very grateful and thankful to each of you. I'm so glad uh, to be here. And let's celebrate our pastor and first lady, the Pastor Dennis Rogers and Lady Rogers. Come on, let's thank God for them on today. Indeed, this is my friend. These are our friends. And I'm so grateful. Our family goes way back. And I just appreciate Elder Rogers, who's always been consistent. This is just a good family. These are just good people. When you talk about the Dennis family, the Rogers family, and I appreciate he, and I just thank God every time we see each other, it's cordial. Every time we see each other, we're fellowshipping. And it's been like that as long as I can remember. I'm so grateful for what the Lord is doing for you. Happy 10th year anniversary. I know time can't tell it all, the things that you faced since you've been here. One thing I know, coming after your father, you can't feel his shoes. You had to bring your own. Your father's a great evangelist, so if you just give me time to just honor Mother Rogers also. And I thank God for all the ladies that you are, the founding leaders of this ministry. We appreciate you, and I honor all of the Rogers family on today. My pastor is here, the superintendent, Robert Robinson. I cannot go any farther further without you now that my pastor, Lady Robinson, Dr. Robinson, being here. I appreciate Pastor Robinson who gave me a chance years ago, and we worked together until the Lord called us to serve in our own ministry. I worked, try to be as faithful as possible to Pastor Robinson. I learned so much under Pastor Robinson, and um, I try to dress like him a little bit too. Uh, he's a man of style and class, and I appreciate him. And I say that I'm not playing, I'm for real. I honor my pastor, and uh, I do whatever I can to support him and to Pastor Malone, um, um, and I appreciate uh, Pastor Hobson, and my friend, and I thank God for all of these elders, Elder Ruckers, all of you, my brothers and sisters, Elder Radliff, I appreciate you, and to the assistant pastor here, and I thank God for Elder Dennis, excuse me, Elder um, Thaddeus Rogers uh, for the introduction, and then Elder Noble uh, from First Trinity being with us today. I honor all of the lady, leading ladies, Sister Hobson, and what can I say? about Mother Donna Robinson. I haven't got a chance to say that yet. Supervisor. And this is an honor just to see it. The Lord has elevated her. And she's been so faithful. She went on assignments, preaching and pastoring. She's done it all, y'all. And God has elevated her. And we've seen her serve on every level. And so we can just help you to honor her on her new elevation. Mother, I honor you. I honor you. I love you. Yeah. You and Dee Robinson, I appreciate you all so much. There's so much I can say. I thank God for my own wife, Lady Alicia Williams. I appreciate you. I love you so much. You've been married 16 years. In a few months, it'll be 17 years. And I thank God for my family, my wife, my children. God has blessed us, and I'm so grateful. First Trinity is here. I want First Trinity to stand. I'm so grateful. I see Brother Matthew Jemison and his sister, and I see Sister Tatum and Sister Barbara Williams and uh, uh, Sister Noble. I appreciate you. We're few in number, but we're mighty because we first trained. We're few in number, but God has blessed us. And I thank God for the uh, first trinity. They are working with us and giving a young preacher a chance. I'm following the legend in Pastor Hill, but I appreciate how this church has embraced us and given us an opportunity to serve. I'm so thankful. It's so much that I can say, but I want to go to the word of God. Real quick, brother, brother, you know I love you and I appreciate you. Brother Brother used to give me some furniture. He used to work with, especially when I first got married. I needed Brother Brother. He helped us. <laughs> he helped us so much. And, uh, and I thank God for Brother Brother. I still will get by there. But he's done so much. Um, I'm having to get used to this because um, y'all ain't going to tell the truth. But I'm not used to afternoon services no more. <laughs> We, 
went and got out of shape Sunday night. Said, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And, and I'm, I'm praying and saying, Lord, is it me? Is it this? And I looked and said, this is my nap time. That's what it is. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Y'all got the mask on. But if I can look behind your mask, you know I'm telling the truth. We we having to get adjusted to this, and so. I'm not going to try to preside it today. You've done a wonderful job, and I appreciate you. <laughs> if you'll stand for the reading of the word, I want to go to Exodus, the fifth chapter. I'm going to read the latter verses. Exodus, the fifth chapter. I want to read verses 22 and 23. And then Exodus chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Exodus, the fifth chapter. I want to read verses 22 and 23, and then Exodus, the sixth chapter, verses 1 and 2. Exodus 22 and 23. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he had done evil to this people. Neither hath he, hast thou delivered thou people at all. Chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. With a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. Listen again to verse 23. For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to this people. Neither have you delivered thou people at all. But listen to what the Lord said again. Then the Lord said unto Moses, now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. Yes. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. I want to use for a subject just one word, deliverance. deliverance. You may take your seat in Jesus' name. I was looking at a social media post some time ago and it says God gives his hardest battles to his strongest soldiers. All right. This statement caused me to ponder because sometimes I wonder just what is my strength level. I sometimes have referred to scriptures and songs that say Jesus knows how much we can bear. Because God knows sometimes I can't bear these burdens alone. But I'm convinced that oftentimes our trouble, God knows how much we can handle. And God will give us the grace to endure hardness as a good soldier. I'm convinced that oftentimes our trouble, our trials, and our tests come to ignite our faith and increase our testimony. So I thought I would eavesdrop into the middle of a conversation Moses had with God. Yes, sir. Moses is lashing out at God because God had not done what he told him he would do. Right, Moses is lashing out at God because he was looking for things to get better. Yeah. God was looking, Moses was looking for God to have changed things by now. Yeah. Moses has gotten angry with God but things have not gotten better, they've gotten worse. And I can hear Moses talk to God saying, I spoke in your name and nothing changed. Our things have grown worse. I can imagine him asking God, why have you let us get in so much trouble? And why have you let us down? Why did you send me? God, why did you choose me? Pastor Ross, I know you have been there. When the way of ministry and you're wondering why did God allow all of this pressure to apply to Pastor Rogers? But my brothers and sisters, I can ask you this same question. Have you questioned God and asked God why? Yeah. 
Why, why do you let me suffer when it seems like everyone else is successful? Why do you make me go the long way around? Lord, why did you call me to embarrass me? Oh, Lord, I quoted scriptures. I prayed. I believed in your name. And things have gotten worse. And you ain't even delivered me. If we be honest at some point in our life, we ask the question, Lord, how long? How long must I go through what I'm going through? Lord, how long will I go through this heavy burden? Lord, how long will I deal with what I'm dealing with? Has anybody ever asked God how long? Moses had gotten frustrated with God and because he spent time with God. He labeled before God and God told him, I know you're going through, but I am with you. Matter of fact, he told Moses, not only am I with you, I am endorsing you. Matter of fact, I'm going to qualify you even when your record suggests I should be. <laughs> Moses had a complaint against God because the people turned on him and his brother Aaron. The children of Israel were tired of being put on hold. They felt like Moses kept saying to them everything they wanted to hear. And they got tired of the same mundane, the communication, the a confirmation that God would do just what he said. And Moses was sent several times to convey the message that God would deliver. The problem is God had not showed up. But watch this, my brothers and sisters. I need to help somebody. If you complain long enough, you will eventually become bitter. And I discovered that there are many church folks that are bitter. You're shouting and dancing, but you're bitter. You're, you're shouting and praising God, but you're hurt on the inside. You're shouting and dancing, but you need to be healed because you're bitter. It ain't nothing like a bitter saint. It ain't nothing like a hee-hawing saint. It ain't nothing that like a saint that says, if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. Just be honest, you bitter. Sometimes when we are bitter, my brother and sister, we begin to blame everybody for what we're going through. Y'all ain't gonna say that. The music too loud, the choir too loud. I don't like this and I don't like it. It's too cold up in here. It's too hot up in here, but you just bitter. My brothers and sisters, you gotta be careful because bitterness will come over the saints. You look good, but you bitter and hurt on the inside. My brothers and sisters, inevitably, you'll begin to blame. You remember what happened to Martha and Mary uh, uh, as they looked over Jesus. They said, Jesus, where are you? I've been waiting on you. My brother is dead. You ain't came to see him. You didn't send a committee. By the way, uh, uh, hospitality didn't come out of the house. They found all kind of reasons to make an excuse. We ain't heard from the pastor. We ain't seen him. Lord, where are you? When you are bitter, you look and see everything wrong. Ain't nothing right. The church ain't right. The church don't love nobody. The pastor ain't right. He ain't called and checked on me. Y'all ain't gonna say that. I ain't hurt. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Sometimes we are bitter. Mary and Martha challenged Jesus and said, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Look like Jesus would have been there, perhaps. I'm talking to somebody who feels just like these sisters. Lord, where are you? Somebody is looking for Jesus to show up there. You've been disappointed. Look like things would have changed by now. Look like your season, you would have gotten a breakthrough by now. My brothers and sisters, there are times when it seems that things will appear to be dead. It will appear that it's all over. It will appear that God has turned a deaf ear to your cry. Sometimes, to be honest, it looks like God has forgotten you. And I was talking to somebody, and I want to talk to somebody that's listening to me right now. You got that Martha and Mary spirit. You, you, you said, God, is too late. Where are you? Can I tell you that there will be times when your deliverance will be on delay? Why y'all here in the house now? Ain't nobody saying. I need to say it again. Sometimes your deliverance will be on delay. 
there will be times when God allows the saints to suffer and to go through. He is a long time God. Yes, he is. He will come through. He is a very present help. But sometimes his timing is not what we desire. There are times, my brothers and sisters, I'm going to be honest, that I prayed and I still ain't got what I prayed for. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. There are times I prayed and I thought God would have done it by now. There's times I share with people what God was going to do. And God let me look foolish and say, I didn't tell you that. That's you saying that I was going to do it. I didn't tell you I was going to do it. Tomorrow, you got to trust and wait on me. Sometimes I look stupid because I was expecting God to do it by now. Sometimes we look foolish when we start sharing our dreams and saying what we believe God is going to do. You didn't even mean Paul prayed three times. God still didn't do what he wanted him to do. He, he prayed and he prayed three times. And God said, I ain't going to do it like you want, but I'm going to give you grace to endure the situation. When I don't answer, you still got to answer. Grace will be sufficient. My brothers and sisters, what do you do when God has not done it yet? When God has not answered your prayer yet? When God has not healed your body yet? When God has not saved your son yet? When God has not shifted the ministry like we thought he would have done? What do you do? My brothers and sisters, my prayer is that God will give us faith that if we don't see it, help us to know it's still going to come to pass. For whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, believe. Believe you're going to receive them and you shall have it. I need to tell somebody, believe it. Say it and expect it. Y'all ain't going to say, believe it. Lord, have mercy, I'm about to get my own self excited. Say it and expect it. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If he said, don't care how long it is, and God said it, don't, don't matter what you go through, if God said it, it's coming to pass. It's, it's going to happen. Tell somebody, it's going to happen. It's, gonna, it's going to happen. You thought that when you turned 50 that God would have done it. Now God said, I'm going to wait till you get 55. I'm going to wait till you get 55 and a half. You thought he would have done it by now. You set a goal there at 51. And God going to do it. And God said, just because you said it at 51, I'm going to make sure I go to 54. But if God said you all you got to do is rest in what God said. And God told Moses, I'm going to make it good. I know it looks like Pharaoh is winning. I know it looks like the devil has got you in all kinds of traps. I know it looks like you're not going to come out of it. But if I said it, I'm going to make it good. God, my brothers and sisters, will fulfill his promise. But, but, but let me ask you this. Do you have some unanswered prayers? Huh? Is your deliverance on delay? Well, let me help you, my brothers and sisters, when deliverance is on delay. You must keep trusting when you can't trace. You, you, you do remember doing some of the encounters with God. God had to remind uh, Moses and the children of Israel, I heard, I've seen your affliction. white suit. If God can take care of the lilies of the field, if God can take care of everything else, he's going to take care of you. Tell somebody I've never seen the righteous for sitting on his seed, begging bread. It's been rough, but he's still taking care of it. Going through some things, but he's still taking care of it. Lost some things, but I'm still hanging on in that. Tell somebody I'm still standing. Been through some things, been through some rough patches, but I'm still standing. I Say. My brothers and sisters, sometimes you need a shot in the arm that'll tell you to hold on. You need a shot in the arm to tell you that you gonna have some troubles, but be a good cheer. God said you've overcome the world. He's overcome. 
the world. And if God can take her the world, he can get to your address. He can get to North Little Rock. He can get to Sherwood. He can get to Parent Club. He can get to Lone Oak and Carter. God knows where you are. Watch this. I've heard them. I've seen them. But he also said, I come to deliver them. God so bold as a burning bush that was not consumed. God turned a rod into a snake and a snake back into a rod. God allowed Moses' hands to become a leprous, to become leprous, and then he restored them and healed them whole. God kept giving Moses signs that he is with him. And I believe sometimes we forget that God says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I know you've been crowded. And I know you've been hurt. And I know you feel like you're by yourself. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered them out of them all. And I come to tell you, God will deliver. Who told you the road would be easy? Who told you you wouldn't go through persecution? Who told you you wouldn't be prosecuted? Who told you? But God will do it. Sometimes it looks like you got to go through. And the children of Israel forgot how blessed they were. Watch this. When Pharaoh took office on the first day, the Bible says he noticed the children of Israel and he said, these folks are more mightier than us. Yeah. These folks are stronger than us. Now watch this. They in depression. They are in chains. They are bound, but they blessed. You're just going to burn. Pharaoh was looking at chain folks. Pharaoh was looking at uh, bound folks, but he said they blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he said, they are stronger than us. Yeah. Pharaoh said, let's make their lives miserable. The Bible says, the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Now, in fact, they were like baby kids. We don't die. We multiply. The more the enemy put on them, the more they produce. The more the enemy tried to hold them, God let them prosper. The devil meant it for evil. Sister, something good is coming out of this. I know we are still in a pandemic, but something good going to come out of this. Uh, uh, something good going to come out of your situation. I know you've lost some things, but something good going to come out of this. I hear victory on the way. I know God has had you to go through for some time, and I know it's been wrong, but I need to tell you something good. Don't come out of this. God told me to say an extra word. He told me to be Amazon Prime today and give it to you right now. Something good is coming out of this. Something good is going to come out of your frustration. Something good is going to come out of this trap. Something good is going to come out of this. God is still in control. My brothers and sisters, we got to just learn how to wait on the Lord. And he will come through. Oh, you got to hold on and wait on the Lord and be of good cheer when you answer. But when your answer has not arrived, you need to ask God to renew your strength. I remind the Bible there to ask the question, hey, has thou not known and has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, faileth not, neither is weary. Well, there is no searching of his understanding. He hears to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases strength. But they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew your strength. I don't know why God gives us delays and detours, but I know 
know one thing, he will come through. Yeah. Will you tell somebody, he will yeah. come through. Yeah. I can hear God saying, Moses, I know your tolerance level is low. Yeah. I know you want to leave the signs that I gave you. But I need you to hang on in there. Yeah. I know you're running on faith fumes. But I need you to know you still gonna be blessed. Well. I know your sorrow and I can. Moses questioned God and looked out at him, but listen to what God says in Exodus 6 and 1. Now shall you see. Not later, but now shall you see. You know, listen, not tomorrow, but now shall you see. Not next week, but now shall you see. You're going to see your deliverance turn into a breakthrough to remind you still got a date with destiny. You need to know that God has a date with your name on it. God said, now shall you see. You heard my conversation. Now I'm getting ready for manifestation. See what I'm going to do to your oppressor. The revelation is God is going to give a demonstration because God is getting ready to hook up coordination. God says, I'm going to do something with my strong hand and I'm going to drive Pharaoh out. Pharaoh got to lose his grip. But not only must Pharaoh lose his grip, Pharaoh is going to have to let the saints go. I know the devil don't like it, but his time is up. And he says, with a strong hand, I'm going to give you a release. God says, there shall be a performance. I'm getting ready to perfect the work that I started in you. Somebody just need to ask God, Lord, move with your strong hand. God, lay your hands on me. I don't mind. Tell somebody he's gonna lay his hands on me. 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 Because God can fix what's broken. God can take your hands if you put it all in his hands. God told me to tell you to hold on to his hands. His unchanging hand. Somebody needs to know. Scripture says, I'm going to stretch out my hands and I'm going to do something with my hands. I'm going to move Pharaoh. And if God can touch the Red Sea, if God can touch the Jordan, if God can move with his hands, I wish you would say, the Lord, move. Lord, touch. Lord, deliver. Lord, bring me out. Lord, do it. Lord, fix it. Ain't nobody do it but you.
for a spiritual exercise. But if you need God to do something for you, just get in one of those eyes and go crazy for about 45 seconds and give God a praise and deliverance and give it to take place.
board so we can see Mother Rogers beat you. Because she's the best voter in your family. I was just going to say, now y'all really taking us back because this was my mom and father's thing. Yes, Amen. Now they were still saved, but they sure could bowl some ball. Lord have mercy. We got to go bowl, man.
But take it home or give it to the wife or get with me and I'll let you take it back and get something you really need. Praise the Lord. But anyway, this is from the senior brother, and we thank God for you. And give me the senior brother to be soon a hand. Thank God. You know, it's a song that Sister Shanty always said, give them the flowers while they live. Oh, girl, there you go right there. I ain't going to fool with that. Come on. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We are truly honored to be here, and we wouldn't have missed this occasion for the world. We just have a small token from uh, Deacon Ira, myself, and Ari and Austin. This is a self-care gift. We want you to go and have a better care on us. All right. When we tried to pour them, I finally pointed him up and said, Now, what are your intentions? He couldn't even say nothing. He was just in shock. I said, Don't play that about mine. <laughs> amen, amen. But this is for my Doreen. Thank you so much. Are you looking for a church where love flows because God is in control? A church where God is really real? Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. 